Tony Soprano, he lived and breathed. Like, I don't think there was anything more he could have given to that role, for sure. Not today. Hi, Amy Lee. Hi. Uh, this is a special episode. It is a very special episode. It happens to be our 25th episode. Which is so weird. Crazy because... timing. Uh, HBO actually reached out to us and they wanted to team up and do a special 25th anniversary episode of this, of Not Today Pal slash Soprano. Like it's the Sopranos 25th anniversary. That's right. And it just happens to be Not Today Pal's 25th episode, like you said, which is just kismet. Yeah. How uh, how special. So we spoke to those guys over there. We got some stuff for you. They helped out with some stuff. Yeah. And uh, so the first thing, uh, we, we do memory lane on this show every episode, which is like we show, we've been friends for over 25 years, and we show a photo from some time in our friendship. So we have, we'll start off with a little memory lane. Oh, wow. Oh, well, that's from the 20th anniversary of Sopranos, the party. So that was five years ago. So that was 2019. Very good. And then I pulled some strings and I got them to send us a photo of us from the 75th anniversary of Sopranos. Tell me, how do we look? Oh, shit. How do you feel about that? I don't even look like myself anymore. My teeth got yellow. I look insane. You look, <laughs> I look like an old Rob. I feel like I look older than you, right? Wow, that's depressing. That's gnarly. Yeah, I sent that to my manager and he was like, I don't think it's morally right to look at this. And I was like, yeah, what do you this mean? Is a, this is hurting my heart right now. Ooh. I mean, listen, if we make it to, what would that be, 96 years old? You know what I mean? I mean, my or... grandmother's 103. She just beat COVID for the fourth time. She's like cranking. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think and she we does would, not look that old. I think we, yeah, we'd be about, I, we'd be about ninety. So I think that she doesn't look that old. <laughs> no, I'd be like hundred and ten. I'm forty two, bro. Yeah, fifty more years. Fifty oh. years. Whoa! Mm. Oh, shout out HBO. Thanks for giving Jamie a job because clearly it wasn't going to be anything, anything else. Yeah, <laughs> anything outside of the entertainment industry. Uh. We also we did an Instagram for HBO where we asked for. Uh, everybody's questions, Sopranos questions, whatever everyone asks. So they're all in here. Mm-hmm. Uh, at any point during the show, we might reach in there and grab one of your questions. But we have someone else who had a question for us who sent in a video. I think Zolo has it for us. Huge fan of the show. I watched it religiously every Sunday. And I got to tell you, every time I finished the show, I felt like making a nine-course meal. Every time... Soprano sat down to eat or you guys were eating at the table even the way Soprano was breathing while he was eating I was like I'm starving now my question is did you guys have a personal chef that was dedicated to just making Italian meals did that come out of catering who the hell was cooking the food on the show, and did it taste as good as it looked? Happy 25th. So for anyone just listening, that's one of the funniest people in the world, Sebastian Maniscalco. Yeah. I I mean. He's he's so good. And he had, do you see that big eggplant behind him? No. That's a big eggplant. That's what you're looking at, huh? You horny? I No. I I just like, I like looking at people's homes. So Ah. I was like, oh, look, he's got bananas, an eggplant. He clearly likes food, hence the question. I don't remember. I remember the food being like very tasty. I don't ever remember not liking the food that they made us. I feel like it came through catering. So some of the food did, but sometimes we would have to eat like Chinese food. Right. And we would be start shooting at six in the morning. So they would order it the night before and then they would microwave mm-hmm. it. It got kind of nasty by like hour 12 of eating the same microwave Chinese food. It would yeah. be pretty bad. But some of the Italian food. The Italian food was always good. And I, I believe it came through catering. If not, it would have been like catered from a restaurant because I have memory of like, you know, when you order the for the big tins. Exactly. Exactly. And them just sort of serving us from that because they could keep that warm for us. 
Um, but I remember Edie's trick always was she always had a small piece of gum in her mouth and she would eat very little because I learned the hard way because I would just eat in the first few takes and then realize, oh, now I'm committed to eating this much every every angle. I was going to say, that was Jim's take. trick. He would just eat it all. Yeah, he would just somehow eat it he all. He would just eat that's for right. nine hours. But that's what happens. It's like you show up hungry, you eat for the first like 45 minutes, mm-hmm. and then they're like, all right, again, and you're eight hours later still doing it, and you feel like you want to be sick. Yeah, yeah. But the food was always good from what I remember. Yeah. The um, We got another video question. Oh. Uh, and by the way, Sebastian Maniscalco is doing, uh, he has a show called Bookie on HBO right now. That's awesome. Yeah. Fellow HBO guy. Yeah. If they could do the last episode of the last season over again, how would they imagine it? Because I know we all have some thoughts. Wow. Okay, so that's Jodie Foster Jody herself. Foster. Um, we're stepping it up this episode a little bit <laughs> compared to what we're wow, usually doing. I know. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> um, gosh, I don't think it would be like a fan favorite or anything anybody maybe necessarily would want to watch but i always wanted to film meadow's wedding with um tony and carmella like i wanted that moment with meadow and tony and him walking her down the aisle um i wanted it to be at her i wanted her wedding i don't know if it was going to be the finale but there was no room for it before so and she she was engaged and we're talking about it so yeah i always wanted that moment that would have been great. It's it's hard for me to imagine changing anything. Like obviously, I didn't watch the show. We know that, but like yeah. it's hard for me to imagine changing anything about Sopranos. You know what I mean? Of like course. I just can't. I don't. And also, like not have watching it. I don't know what would have been satisfying to people. Well, yeah, and I think that fa- the fans of the show appreciate it in a way that you and I just like can't and have a and have a you know um a perspective of the show that we can't even if we tried um so yeah obviously nothing would change but I don't know I think AJ would have given an epic speech to Meadow at the wedding like it just with all the care and any reason to have all of us all together and so like the don's daughter getting married it would have been a tony sirico would have given a six exactly yeah like whose envelope been... was bigger it would have been a whole competition of who gave more money yeah. to me all the things the the only thing that well, you know we talk about this all the time but the only thing i would change about sopranos is that they would have released the outtakes yeah that we did because we had i mean we had to have had we <laughs> right we had i mean there were there i feel like there would be hundreds of hours at least yeah yes. of us just fucking up and stuff so to give people a little taste of what this would have been like me and jamie had to make a 30 second clip for instagram <laughs> and we had a few outtakes and i was like hey why don't we show them here since we can't show real sopranos outtakes happy soprano <laughs> there you go yame happy soprano I was really struggling that day. It was the day after Christmas. I was tired. Yeah. <laughs> Happy 25th. Nope. No, <laughs> just right away. No. I knew it wasn't a good one. <laughs> you knew it that wasn't, wasn't the one. I wasn't going anywhere good. All right, we got another one. Happy 25th. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I already. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. <laughs> no, it's good, Yame. This is good. I'm this is what the people... I mean, could you imagine, like, honestly, this is obviously fun or whatever, but imagine, like, James, Tony Srico, Edie, like, everybody of just all oh, the yeah. messing up. Oh, yeah. That was my favorite. You feel bad I, sometimes because we would start laughing so hard. You that and I caught the giggles a couple... To the point where I remember people getting angry at us a, yeah. a handful of times. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It was... and But there were times also where the adults did. For there, sure. There were times where it was like, remember that one time they had to play like a song and they said it, it was like. At the funeral. Yeah, it was like Livia's funeral and they said this was Livia's like favorite song yeah, or whatever. Yeah, from like some Rodgers and Hammerstein musical. And it was supposed to be the funer- a funeral, so you're supposed to be upset and people were We couldn't make laughing. eye contact with each other. Yeah. No one could no. look and at each other. And you would just other. feel somebody next yeah. to you shaking. <laughs> but that took like hours yes. because people just couldn't stop. Yes. Yeah. Uh, laughing. I think we might have we might have one more outtake. Hey, happy twenty fifth anniversary, Sopranos. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I yes. Know Jamie just... Nothing to say yeah, beyond nothing. that. All right. I think we have more, but I think people get the point. Yeah. Um. So 
HBO specifically had a couple questions before we get into the the um the cup the cup. Uh, they wanted to know: Was there ever an acting tip that James gave you? Um, <clears throat> he God, so many. He definitely told me. I remember when we were shooting the scene where um, I asked him if he's in the mafia, and we were stuck in the car. For a long time, they had two cameras set up and we just rolled and we shot it for maybe two hours. And I remember it was like specifically on me in this moment. And we finished and they said, okay, great, let's move on. And he stopped and he looked at me and I remember he grabbed both my shoulders and he's like, do you feel like you gave everything you wanted to give? And I didn't know how to answer it. I was like, I don't know. And he's like, then you ask for another take. You always have the right to ask for another take. And I didn't know that. I didn't know that I was allowed to ask for that. So I'll never forget that. And then I remember him telling me once we were coming up to a hiatus and I had an audition for something. And I think I was expressing I was nervous or whatever. And I remember him saying to me, like, that's your time in the room. So like you've bought that time. You've earned that time. You've earned that six, seven, eight minutes that you're going to be in that audition room. So like use that time, go slow be present, like don't rush, like that's your time. And I, that translates to me on set as well. Auditions are the absolute worst part of acting. The absolute worst. For sure. The worst. It's so, And there's Hate not it. a lot of bad parts. Listen, acting is a pretty cush uh, gig. When you get to do you it. Know? Yeah, yeah it's, it's it's pretty great. But that those fucking auditions are so bad. Um, what about you? Not that he ever gave, like straight up gave tips um, but I think just the way he made sure everything was real, you know, yes. like he would, you know, if it was like, um, you know, you're supposed to take a sip out of a cup or something and the cup was empty, he would be like, no, how, how, can somebody come and fill this cup up? Like yeah. the more real everything was, the less you had to act. So he was just always trying to make things and he wouldn't be real. satisfied if it wasn't like, even if he, if he felt like he had a false moment, he would stop. Like only if it was on him, of course, the camera was on him, but he would stop and, you know, express that. I remember one time he put rocks in his shoes. Yeah. For a scene. Because he was supposed to be in pain mm -hmm. and he would put a pebble in his shoe. Yeah. I mean, that yeah. is like. Commitment. That's just, it's just so smart too. It's like, damn, because then it's, that's the less, less you have to act, you know? Yeah. He was, I think, you know, Tony Soprano, he lived and breathed. Like, I don't think there was anything more he could have given to that role for sure. Yeah, I think one of the things I'm most grateful for in my life is like I've had the experience to be around people who are actually the best at what they do, yeah. like the best in the world. Yeah. And he was one of them, Edie. Mm -hmm. Like just seeing people who are the absolute best and also a little bit knowing like, man, I don't got that. You know what I mean? Like being like, being like, hey, you guys have this. Like mm -hmm. I, I don't have to, you know what I mean? It's like when you watch a professional athlete or something and yep. you're just like, yeah, that's that's for, that's for to sit and watch. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I got to watch very close up, but like, yes. you know, you go to like a football game and you know you're like, yeah, that's that's their thing to do. Like, you know, and thank you for doing it. Well, thank you're not you for giving yourself go. enough credit. But no, yes, but it's I like, understand thank you for, saying. you know, I'm not trying to be like, oh, I'm the fucking worst. But like when you see the people who are the best in the world and the dedication they have and this, I just, don't, don't have it. I yes. never, you know. Well, that's the same with an athlete. Anyone. The, exactly. The dedication that they had and he had to that role, I've never seen in my career since. Yeah. It's it's incredible. Yeah. It's incredible to see. Yeah. Um, we, they also, HBO also wanted to know uh, what the first day on set was like. What we remember, what we remember from the first day. Okay. I remember I had a tiny, tiny little trailer but was like, thought it was the greatest, coolest thing in the world. And there- If it was today, you would have been making TikToks about it and Instagrams, but we didn't have that shit back then. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, everybody was just That's present. right, that's right. Um, I remember showing up to set and, so you have stand-ins when you're working on a film set. So it's somebody of your stature, like same hair color, same height, same size around-ish. Um, and they it's basically, basically if, if you look fast, it's supposed to be you. <laughs> right. And yeah. they rehearse with the camera. So the camera sort of rehearses all of the movement of the scene so they get it right so they don't waste the actor's time or the actor can rest until or we could go do hair and makeup. We could go sure, do things a lot of that, things, yeah. A lot of things. And when we showed up to set and I saw a girl 
rehearsing mm. my scene, I started to panic that I actually didn't have the role yet. And this was still part of the process. Wow. Yeah. I remember kind of being nervous that this, like, I was like, shit, I told everybody right. that I got a part. Maybe I did it. See, I, I, I have kind of that same exact thing where when I remember when we got the news, like, you're on a TV show. And my family was like, that's it. We made it. Yeah. Like, like, that's where we're getting out of here. Like, you know, like, this is fucking, it. yeah, like, you're on TV now. And then I remember talking to Tony Sirico, who, if anybody doesn't know, played Paulie Walnuts, who was the absolute best. He, um, I was talking to him, and he's like, listen, kid, we do 30 of these things. Like, we've, we've mm -hmm. all worked together. We do this. This will, we'll probably never see each other again. You know, you, you try, you, 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 know, you do these things, and you hope that something's going to hit, but nothing hits. Like, basically just saying, like, you know. Good luck. Sorry. And yeah. then I'm like 12 years old. And I'm like, oh, I got to go tell my whole family. Like, this isn't it. Like, you know, yeah. we, we didn't. And then, you know, 20, we are. 25 years later, here we we're are. sitting here still, uh, still talking about it. What's up, guys? DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, is bringing you an offer that'll help make the playoffs electrifying. New customers can bet five bucks on any game and get 200 instantly in bonus bets. I got to say, I keep notifications off for everything. When I'm in New York, I put the notifications on for DraftKings, and they let me know when I have special offers. I love it. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code NOTTODAY. New customers can bet just 5 bucks to get 200 instantly in bonus bets only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code NOTTODAY. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 and over, age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash football for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsibility gaming resources. One in five Americans have learn a new language on their bucket list. If that's you, make 2024 the year you finally check it off the list with Babbel. Be a better you in 2024 with Babbel, the science-backed language learning app that actually works. Don't pay hundreds of dollars for private tutors or waste hours on apps that don't really help you speak the language. Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Or you can use it like me, where I used to brush up on my Spanish that made it better and I can talk to my relatives, have more meaningful conversations. Babbel has over 10 million subscriptions sold. Plus, all of Babbel's 14 language courses are back by their 20-day money-back guarantee. So here is a special limited-time deal for our listeners. Right now, get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash pal. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash pal, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash pal. Rules and restrictions may apply. So we have... Another memory lane wow. uh, that I thought would be special. So let's let's take a look at this one. You know what wow, that is? Wow, that's Ian? the pilot. This is the first time we ever appeared on screen together. Wow. You know what? I really remember filming this, and I re really remember being so excited because it felt so real. Yeah, like yeah. I was like, oh, this feels like a morning with my friend and my brother. And that feels like my mom. Like it, I remember feeling because I had only done theater prior to that. I remember being so excited about being an actress in this moment because I was like, oh, this is this is what it's like. This feels real. This feels good. This feels fun. I And I also remember us getting the giggles in that scene and getting in trouble. Really? I do. I remember David getting real pissed at us. And I remember feeling a little bit okay because his daughter also had the giggles with us who played my friend, Hunter Scangarello. If you didn't know, that's Michelle Chase um, who played Hunter and that's David Chase's daughter. And David Chase, anybody doesn't know. Created The Sopranos. Created The Sopranos. Yeah. We have uh, one more. This is the last scene we did together. The last time we appeared, there Couple it is. Couple angles wow. of this one. Yeah, this is the last time we appeared on screen Shit. together. Wait, after this scene. Yes. 
This was the very last scene I shot on the stage. And I remember there was like the last thing I shot, I was either leaving the room or entering the room. And I remember they asked me to do it again and being like, oh, that's weird. Why are they making me do it again? And when I came out, everyone, the entire crew, all the writers from the writer's room, David Chase, everyone was staying there. I'm going to get emotional right now. Why? This is crazy. And they were like, that's a wrap. That's a series wrap on Jamie. And I just bawled. Like just seeing all of these people that you've just spent the last 10 years of your life with. Um, to me, I think of like personally what I had gone through in the 10 years and all that they had meant to me and all the ways that they had been there for me. And I remember all I, I buried my head on you. I remember because you came to hug me first. And I just kept saying thank you because that's all I felt. It was just so much gratitude for the entire experience. But yes, that was it. That was right before. And I remember that. And then I think as you were like crying or being all emotional, they like were like, oh, they also realized this is the last time the Soprano family will ever be together again. Fuck. So sad. That's crazy. So they were like, uh, they announced that and everybody was clapping. It was like a whole thing. It was... uh, yeah, I mean, listen, it was special to everybody, and not, but it was just a different kind of special for us because we were fucking children. Well, yeah, but also the two of us where it was like we were, I was a fucking 12-year-old <laughs> yeah. kid who like, you know, like I, I wasn't allowed to go to set by myself. I you know. know. Like you too. Yeah, I like know. we weren't, we had to have we adults had a tutor. around. And like we had Remember a tutor. Remember our bullshit and then, tutor we had? Yeah, and at this point, like you had been married, right? Like you. Married, divorced, divorced all the yeah, things. Yeah, like you're a fucking adult. I'm still a kid in, in a lot of ways. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you were a full, like, you, you know, we it lived. It was a mini adult. It was like we lived a life through this show. And yeah. now it was like, wow, this is over. Yep. And, it, and you know, for me, starting when we were 12, like I had, I just like. I didn't really remember life before mm-hmm. Sopranos, you know? It was mm-hmm. very... But I was also very excited to start being able to just drink every night. That you was, were excited that was, to go out. Yeah, I was excited <laughs> to be like, now I could just party every night, you know? And which you was did. uh I did. You want to see what we got in here? Of Let's course. see what we got in the in the cup. Oh, God. Trying to make us small. get emotional. What's your problem, Jamie? Sorry, Stop I'll it. never do that again. No, fucking tough. AJ and Meadow had real wardrobes that felt really accurate for teenagers at the time. Did either of you have input into what your characters wore? Did you? So not really, but sometimes I would show up on set and like wearing something or like I would show up to a dinner or something wearing something. And then like two weeks later, the wardrobe would be like, yeah, David wanted us to put you in like a Pantera shirt or like a band shirt or like, you know, something with like a giant marijuana leaf on it. I'm like, oh yeah, maybe I shouldn't have worn that to like a dinner that we all went to, you right. know what I mean? You're feeling like stu- wearing like a hat with like a big fucking weed symbol on it, doing something dumb that a 15 year old does. But, but, um, but it worked. Yeah. But then, um, there were definitely times it was more so like the wardrobe. They were great. Juliet, Juliet they were incredible. Was amazing. And they would wardrobes. bring, um, a lot of stuff. And then you kind of got to go through and go, no, yes. like, I don't want to wear that. I don't want to yeah. be in this. This sucks. You know yeah. what I mean? Especially if you knew like, you know, I'm going to be running through the running somewhere in these and these shoes and you know a lot of a lot of that kind of stuff. Did you have input on your clothes? No, I had no put input in the beginning whatsoever. Um, nor did I want to because I just felt I felt like they were sh- showing me who Meadow was a lot of the time because David was so involved with everything. Um, I felt very much like they were giving me clues into who she was by the wardrobe, so I didn't really have a say, but same as you, like, as it went on, um, I think when she was more in the college years, things like that, I started to have a little bit more input as far as just which option I liked better. Um, But no, that's all Juliet Polska, our incredible wardrobe, head of our wardrobe department. I also think people ask questions like that a lot, like, did you make up your own lines? Did you do this? And it's like, I was a 15-year-old kid, and these people were, like, winning Emmys for their job. That's I wasn't right. going to come in and be like, hey, uh, I think you should try this. Mm-hmm. Like, right. they were fucking unreal. Mm-hmm. Like, they were, The best know, of the best. Yeah, they were uh, incredible. So we have, and by the way, we're going to leave some of these questions in here for future episodes. Yeah. When it's just me and you, and we'll get, uh, people get their questions answered. We can't answer them all today. Within the next 25 years, we will get to your questions. Yeah, before before we look like we do in that photo from earlier, yeah. we will answer all your questions. Um, 
we got a video from two of the cast members uh, from Sopranos from the 25th anniversary that we couldn't attend. I can only tell uh, Jamie Lynn and Robert that I love you. I miss you. Um, Happy New Year. And I'm thrilled that we got to spend this time together. And I just want to say to you both, Jamie Lynn and Robert, that, you know, for me, part of the show's success had to do with you guys. And I so mean that from my heart uh, because I don't think the show would have been the same if we didn't see what Tony's family life was like. And you made us care about this family so much. And uh, so thank you. And I wish you were here. Love yes, you. we miss you. And no fucking big ziti? What? <laughs> <laughs> One of the great lines ever. Oh, yeah, right, 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 right because uh, Olivia wasn't coming. Yeah. Right. right. And, he was, <laughs> and, he was, and at the time, he was just a, a little I bubble know, ball. I know. Right? So cute. So that was Lorraine Bracco and Steve Buscemi, obviously. I don't think Steve realized at first that she was saying a line from the show and he thought she should be. <laughs> that was funny. Um, oh, that was so nice. Look, Lorraine, while we never really got to work with her, we would be there in the read-throughs, but all the parties, she would host parties at her home in the first couple of years, um, all the events and award shows that we went. She was so much a part of our experience. And Steve, obviously the legend himself, like coming into the show when he did and bringing not only his beautiful acting, but like directing, he was... It was re- he was one of the people that I was so excited to get to like have an experience with because of yeah. this show. You know, like one of the people that just like came into our world that wasn't there originally. Like, oh my God, we get to work with Steve Buscemi? That's the word for it, legend, that I would have said too. He's yeah. incredible. But um, you know what's fun? Like, because obviously we're in Texas, so we didn't make it to the 25th anniversary. Yeah. But um, when I saw... When we were at the 20th anniversary, people were saying, like, you know, it's so sad because Jim's not here because Jim's passed away. And I was like, I don't feel that way at all because Jim would have hated this. Yeah. Like, it was just so much press and photographers and this. And he hated that kind of stuff. So mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? Like, I'm, I, I mean, come on. Jim passing is the saddest thing ever. But but that at that day, I was like, I don't feel that. But here at the 25th anniversary, Tony Sirico not being there. Yeah. I realized what must have been such a hole because unlike James, he was he always there. Lived for that That's shit. It. He wants to be in every picture and every post saying mm-hmm. hitting you with one liners. Like you know what I mean? Like he was such a just like a ball of life at these things that to not have him there must have been uh very noticeable. Yep. Yep. I could not agree more. He was a huge presence. Always. So our last episode we had on uh, Tony Hinchcliffe, who was fantastic. And he wanted to know, like, you know, we just saw Steve Buscemi. And he wanted to know when Steve Buscemi's character was killed and Michael Imperioli's character was killed, David Chase was playing um, Van Morrison. So uh, we asked David what that was all about. Well, I don't remember using it for when he killed Christopher. Um, I don't remember what song it was. Uh, the other one about killing his cousin was because it was called, we'll send you glad tidings from New York. And that was, the New York family was going to kill his cousin if he didn't. There you go, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> Not many super fans get their answer their question answered from the guy himself. But these are the kinds of dreams we make come true over here at Not Today, Pal, you know? That's right. And we have one last video from um, the 25th anniversary. We miss you. We wish you were here. You were legendary. The show wouldn't be the same without you and Robert. And um, we're sad you're not here. But whatever you're doing, have fun. And we miss you. Uh, Robert Island, I... I always tell people my favorite scene is when I went up into your room and I told you about uh, how great your father was. That's a great scene. I loved working. I loved working with you and good luck with your podcast, you and Jamie. And uh, I think that Jamie should be the new mob boss. That would be interesting. That'd be good, right? Let us run over the family. Oh my God. 
He clearly doesn't listen to Not Today, Pal, because he wouldn't think he would say that if he really knew me. If he really knew me. No, but you're but, an actress. You got it, Jamie. Okay. You're very, you know. Uh, I love all these guys. Like, the they've best. just always, always just the warmest. And, you know, I'm sure other people feel this way, too. Like, when you see Al and Vinny in, in this realm and them just speaking and they're just lovely humans, they're such good actors. Like, they were so great on the show i i know you say you'll never watch it but i feel like one day if you ever can just because you appreciate how fucking good they i think that was what i mean obviously you know everybody's good but then when you watch it and know somebody personally and then see what they do you're like whoa you were fucking great like al is so good in the show so good yeah i mean they are i can't i can't watch the show i don't i don't have it in me jane uh I'll stop but somebody who was at the 25th anniversary was Jason Serbone, who played your... Jackie Jr. Who played your boyfriend, Jackie Jr. Was he ever fiancé or anything like that? No, he was killed before we got there. So sad. Uh, but we he was at the 25th anniversary, and he actually texted me and was like, you know, I wish you were here and this. And I was like, well, why don't you, uh, why don't you come on the show and tell us what it was like? So he's going to... We got a phone call with him. That's about to go down. Hello. Yo. Hey. Hi. Hi. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Jason Serbone on the phone. How you doing, buddy? What's up, guys? How is the 25th anniversary? Tell us all about it. So the 25th anniversary was actually pretty amazing. It sucked that you guys were not there. Yeah. There were, you know, there were definitely some people that were not there. Just obviously some people who were not with us. But um, there was, you know, there was also some people that were absent, like, you guys um but it was really it was kind of amazing i actually i'll have to send you pictures or something i got i have like the party favors and things like that um that i wanted to show you but uh it was just so nice to see some of the like you know i mean granted we run into some of the actors here and there but like the crew like there's so many people that i just haven't seen in so long and um rob we i kind of mentioned it to you but um, uh, like George Ann Walken, who cast the show. Yeah. I mean, I, it's you know, I mean, I hadn't really thought about her recently or anything, but to see her after all these years, and then, like, it just hit me as I'm standing in this room, like, she's probably one of the first people that I really had, like, a, an actual conversation after saying hello to everybody, and um, it just hit me, like, I wouldn't be standing in this room if it wasn't for her. Yeah. Yeah, so anybody who you doesn't know, know I she, mean, she was the person who casted the show and decided all of our fates to tell David, hey, right. we think this person might be good for the role. Check yep. them out. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, if, you know, if she didn't give me a chance, that's it. Like, I wouldn't be standing there. And it was just, you know, it was just an emotional thing. And she was, you know, so we talked for a little bit. And she's like, oh, my God, you're going to make me cry. And she was, she was just so, you know, you see a different side of people, too, after all of these years. Like, yeah. you know. You have some perspective. I mean, granted, we were just kids back then, but to like now actually think about, you know, what an important time it was for us and, and all it's just it was really cool. It was it was an emotional night, I have to say. Emotional. There was some great speeches. Um Steve Buscemi made a great speech, David Chase, um goes on and on. Um uh Matt Weiner spoke. Oh, uh so nice. who else? Stevie Van Zandt. Yeah, there was a there was a lot. What were highlights from the speeches? Like, what were people saying? Um, well, I mean, of course, like, Michael Gandolfini also spoke, um, you know, and, and about his dad. And, uh, you know, I mean, definitely all tributing to, uh, to Jim and stuff like that. Um, yeah. One of, I thought was pretty funny, actually, that Matt Weiner uh, was talking about. And God, I hope I, I'm saying his last name right. Yeah. Aren't I? Yeah. Okay. Because I wasn't there when he was there, which, by the way, side note, um, I had really never met him before, but I spilled a drink on him before I even got to meet him. <laughs> that's, um, that's a nice breaker. Party. We were going up the stairs for, for dinner. I turned, knocked the drink right all over him, and I was like, oh, cool. I know who you are. Okay, great. This is going to be good. I'm never working for you, obviously. <laughs> Um, but, uh, but he was a good sport. But I said, oh, good. Maybe you could hire me to be like a waiter on your next <laughs> <laughs> If you need a bad waiter. So, yeah, yeah. Too. Well, here's the thing everybody yeah. wants to know, Jason, and they're going to want to know. How was the food? The food was the food was good. The food was good. Uh, this place, Danico's, on the menu, you know, they had things like Carmela's baked ziti. Oh, uh, wow. They 
they had uh, the big mouth soul for you know big pussy um uh, they had the Agent Harris Marsala, which I was sitting with uh, Matt Servito, who played Agent Harris. And I should have never told him that they, they named one after him because then it was like going around every table. He's asking people, so how, how, how's your Agent Harris? Is that, you know. Um, so, yeah, I didn't. Uh, I should have done that. Uh, the Maltasanti at the grill. Yeah, so they had, you know, they named all the things. The food was very good. But honestly, we – so – um, we sat at our tables, but it was a lot of just mingling and, it, yeah, yeah. you know, walking around Spilling and there was, a, it was downstairs. There was like a cocktail hour at first. And, uh, then we all went upstairs and, and had dinner and, and then we just like walking around and mingling. I think it was supposed to end, um, at like nine 30. I don't think we left till like 11 or something like that. The yeah, that's how they usually it, was a when, it was a Wednesday. They were like, really? You got that really? Yeah. Usually the lights come on and they're kicking yes. us out. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah. What uh all right man, well listen, we love you. When you whenever you can make your way to Austin, we'd love to have you on. Oh man, I just want I would love to see you guys and I want to get out there. I've never been. So uh yeah, absolutely. We'd love to have you. Thank you. All right, good to hear from you, bro. I'll talk to you soon. All right, take care guys. Bye. Bye. Yeah, uh so the last thing we have a question from one of our dear friends. Hey Rob and Jamie Lynn. Oh. Rob, I don't know if you recognize the background, but we're in your old hood. Uh, I got a question for you guys. Who was the funniest in the cast and why? Love you two gabagools. That's our boy Joe star. Perino. What a stud. Yeah, God. he's listen, he can't even make a fucking uh, phone uh, a video on the iPhone without looking like a movie star. He it's looks incredible. He's like a goddamn movie star. That's Joe Perino. He's our friend. He was also in uh, Sopranos. Mm-hmm. He's in a lot of he was in a lot. He was great in Sleepers. Yep. Other he's a brilliant uh, actor, but even brilliant. just better person. Yes. One of the best people I know. Yes. Him, his lovely wife Yuri, they're incredible. But um funniest person on the set. It's Tony Sirico. Tony Sirico is the funniest guy. Uh, he might be the Aida, funniest guy in the world. Tony Sirico or Aida. Aida, that is Aida very true. always had me laughing, Aida's, whether she meant to or not. Aida is one of the funniest all time. She is an individual. There is nobody on Drea's this planet pretty like funny her. Too. Yeah. Dre is pretty funny. She's funnier now than she was back then. She was usually nervous on set a lot of the time. Yeah. You yeah, couldn't yeah. really get like her f- real personality on set, similar to me, but. Between Tony and Aida, I would say, are the, were the funniest. And also Will Janowitz, who played your... Will Janowitz, uh, who played Finn. Finn. Um, Hilarious guy. Because he's just the weirdest, craziest <laughs> human around. Yeah, you never know. Yes, you uh, never know if he's being real or not. He's out of his mind. Love that guy. Yeah, but everybody, listen. There was, there was not a lack of laughing uh, on that set That's or right. on the show or for sure we were always fucking or, or like for me my favorite thing to do is when we wouldn't be working we would just all be hanging out if we would ever travel together to LA or this sometimes we'd take over like a hotel and it was everybody and like you know you're drinking at the bar you're walking in the hallway this and it's like Tony Srico and this guy and then you're just like this is the fucking nobody went back to their trailers ever in between takes Everyone, yeah. everyone, everyone always hung out and they knew to put all our chairs in a little, little semicircle because that's how we did it. That's how we hung. We were a family. We were a crew. We went through something super special together. And again, if Rob and I were in New York, we of course would have been at that dinner. But that just goes to show you like day one, people from the crew, people that were on one episode to 80 episodes, it's, we're bonded for life and uh, we're the luckiest. And I also think it, sh- it goes to show because uh, it's been 25 years and we still sit across from each other every week at this table for a little bit and mm-hmm. we choose to still be friends and talk mm-hmm. and have fun. But yeah, that's it guys. Thank you for joining us for the special 25th anniversary, 25th Soprano anniversary uh, special we have yeah, here. I'll give you more pictures of my feet as a thank you. The people love pictures of Jamie's feet. We show pictures. We of- have never gotten that many likes on a photo ever. You know what the truth is? The last photo we put out actually got more likes, but I didn't have the heart to tell it you did? the other day when you were sitting around no, talking about your like feet. You were just, you were just sure it was your likes. feet. I got like they a couple the of feet. thousand followers right well, after. You, we were sitting, we were sitting watching football, and you got a DM from somebody who was like, "Hey, how very much?" Speci- I, yes, I got. I, now I have more. I get like very specific propositions. Somebody asked for a photo of Rob and I in a car, 
you driving the car and me with my feet up on the dashboard. And he would pay good money for that specific photo. And then somebody else I saw requested socks. They want your socks after like a day of walking around and. I don't wear socks, so can't fulfill your dreams. Sorry. You just turned somebody on. All right. uh, Thank you. (laughs) Thank you, guys. We'll see you soon.